Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Cross on this February 21st, 2021. This is our first Sunday in Lent as we continue our Lenten journey. Just a reminder that we will be gathering in the Zoom room at 11 a.m. for communion, followed by fellowship time, and then around 11.30 transitioning to sermon talkback time. As we gather, we acknowledge the land that we uh, worship upon. This has been known as millennia as Mokensis, where the elbow meets the Bow River. We call it Calgary. It's traditional homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, and the peoples of Treaty 7 and the Nakota people. We remember to honor, to, uh, as part of our commitment, to work toward reconciliation and right relationship. Let us begin our worship. God meets us in the night. Before the sun rises, before the wound heals, before there are answers, before there is closure. God meets us in the light. Where joy is effervescent, where laughter is contagious, where flowers bloom from cracks in the sidewalk, and where people gather around the table. God meets us at the threshold. At the edge of the water, at the beginning of the wilderness, at the start of something new, on the edge of faith. And if God meets us in all those places, then surely God meets us in between. Staying with us through the wilderness. We are not alone. God is all around. Let us worship the God of the here and now. 
Friends, again and again, God meets us where we are. God's love knows no bounds, which is hard for us to understand and easy for us to forget. Therefore, in confession, we remember together that we are not alone. And in a unified voice, we once again ask for God's grace in that holy reminder. Family of faith, please pray with me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might serve you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might be renewed. So fill me and heal me and bring me back to you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might serve you. God who meets us where we are, there is nowhere we can go that you are not. You were with Jesus at his baptism. You were with him in the wilderness. And even in between, you were there saying aloud, This is my beloved. We know that you are with us too, in the good, the bad, and everything in between. But so often we act like we are alone. Instead of coming to you with our hurt, we hold it in or cast it onto others. Instead of coming to you with our joy, we credit ourselves. And offer you nothing. How can we long for a deeper relationship with you while living like you are nowhere to be found? Forgive our self-centered ways. Remind us that in every breath, in every step, you are there. You are the God who meets us where we are. Before and behind, above and below, within and around. Amen. Amen. Family of faith, if you hear nothing else today, hear this. God is here. God sees you. God knows you. God meets you at the edge of every new beginning. And God calls you beloved. We are washed by the water. We are called beloved. Thanks be to God for a love like that.
precious blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from sin. The precious blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from sin. Let us pray. Holy God, if we are honest, faith often feels like water in our hands. No matter how hard we try to hold on to it, some of it always slips through, like droplets of truth running down our wrists back toward our hearts. This human inability to hold on to you leaves us thirsty for more. As we prepare to read scripture, we pray that once again you would meet us here. Meet us in our hope and in our heartache. Meet us in our fear and our joy. Meet us in our cupped hands and clenched fists. And even if the water keeps running and we do not have a sky parting moment of clarity or a tangible sense that you are near, even if we do not hear the words, this is my beloved, ringing in our ears, we will trust that you are near, always and forever meeting us here, running toward our hearts. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. stars how does the creature say oh how does the creature say praise god of the earthquake god of the storm god of the trumpet blast how does the creature cry how does the creature cry, save? God of the rainbow, God of the cross, God of the empty grave. How does the creature say grace? How does the creature say thanks? God of God of the sick, God of the prodigal, how does the creature say care? How does the creature say thrive? God of the neighbor, God of the fool, God of the pruning hook, how does the Creature say love. How does the creature say peace? God of the ages, God near at hand, God of the loving heart. How do your children say joy? How do your children say hope? first reading is from Genesis 9, verses 8 to 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. 
I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a, a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant, covenant that I make between you and me and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at verse 9. Glory, Glory to you, to you o, Lord. o Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove into him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the reign of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o Christ. O Christ. Noah heard God's voice. Abraham heard God's voice. Hagar heard God's voice. Jesus heard God's voice. Apparently, God has been speaking for centuries. God has spoken to lots and lots of people. But I don't hear anything. In Noah's time, corruption, greed, and anarchy reigned. God determined to give the world a do-over, to end all the violence, and called Noah to an enormous task. Build a boat the size of a football field and fill it with breeding pairs of every animal on earth. I imagine Noah was both terrified and highly motivated. God called Abraham to a challenge. 
Leave your home and your family, all that you know, and go to a place that I will show you, God said. But by the way, I won't show you until you go, and I'll show you sometime on the road. I imagine Abraham was terrified and seduced by the mystery of it all. Hagar and her son Ishmael were abandoned in the desert, banished by Sarah and set to wander towards some unseen and unfamiliar new city. On the hot, dry sand, she collapsed a good distance away from Ishmael. She didn't want him to see her suffer and die of thirst, and she didn't want to see his suffering either. She did not want to to watch his chest rise and fall for the last time, adding heartbreak to her own physical pain. Hagar heard God say, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, I've heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up! Lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. I imagine Hagar was terrified and relieved. And who knows where Jesus had been? In the Gospel of Mark, he bursts on the scene as an adult without any problems. He makes his way to the Jordan River and is baptized by John. He sees the heavens irreparably torn, watches the Holy Spirit waft down and enter into him, and he hears God say, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. His call to ministry begins after that, when that same gentle Holy Spirit drives him out of civilization and into the company of wild beasts in the wilderness. I don't think I'm supposed to imagine Jesus this way, but I imagine him terrified, uncertain, confused, and we might as well add hungry. Apparently, God has been speaking to people for centuries, but I haven't heard anything. Have you? I haven't heard anything. These days I'm blown about by every wind of provincial, national, and global health report, science and research speculation, and weather reports too. I'm hungry for good news from any quarter. I've consigned myself to being shut and isolated in my house well into 2021, and I'm speculating it may be longer than that. I'm tossed about a sea of uncertainty, uncertainty, rudderless in a flood of speculation about COVID variants, vaccines, economics, and politics. And I don't hear anything from God. As COVID cases mount, my heart breaks for people who work day in and day out in the COVID wards and hospitals around the world, those who see firsthand the devastation of this unchecked virus, those who watch people die helpless to do anything but hold their hand. I imagine them terrified and weary, and I wonder if they're hearing from God. I wonder because I don't hear anything. And in the absence of hearing God's voice, I wonder all sorts of things. Does God know about this mess? Does God care? Is God busy in those COVID wards? Is God busy in places outside those wards, outside those wards and hospitals and clinics, apart from any kind of relief or care, where people are suffering on their own with COVID? Am I too rich to deserve God's care? Do I have too much? Am I simply a whiner? And I don't have to imagine how I'm feeling because I know. I'm terrified and I'm exhausted and my memory is foggy. I forget the simplest things and I feel like I'm plodding through a field of haze. But then I remember that I'm a child of God. And in a weird way, there's assurance in looking back over the scriptures and seeing in those ancient stories that Noah must have been terrified too. And Abraham and Hagar. 
and Jesus. It turns out that faith and relationship with God are not based on my hearing. Faith and relationship are not based on hearing. They're not based on human hearing, but on God speaking. Whether I hear God or not, whether we hear God or not. God's care and God's promises are my inheritance, whether I hear God's voice or not. God's care and promises are our inheritance, whether we hear God or not. We are marked and sealed with the cross of Christ, the sign of God's promise. Faith and relationship with God are founded on God's speaking promises. God speaking invitation, God speaking direction and guidance, God speaking love songs, God speaking grace. After the flood, God spoke a promise. God set the rainbow in the clouds to remind God not to destroy, but to love. We live under the rainbow of God's covenant care. Because God speaks promise. After Abraham journeyed faithfully away from everything he knew and into the mysterious call of God, God showed Abraham the stars and spoke a promise. God promised to make Abraham's descendants as numerous as those spread out in the heavens. God promised to make Abraham the father of all people and to bless all nations of the earth through him. We live under that same canopy of the stars because God speaks promise. Hagar and Ishmael journeyed across the desert. They made it out. God's oasis spring revived and refreshed them both. And through Ishmael, Hagar became the mother of all the Islamic world because God speaks promise. We live alongside a vast people living five pillars of faith in Islam in nearly every country of the world because God speaks promise. Jesus survived those wild times of evil's temptation in the Judean desert. He went on from there to say, the time is fulfilled, the reign of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus' whole ministry was God speaking promise, God speaking love, God speaking care, God speaking grace. Whether or not people heard, again and again, God blesses people with renewal. Again and again, God blesses people with protection. Again and again, God blesses people with a way forward on a mysterious journey. Again and again, God blesses people with water in the desert of life. Again and again, God blesses people with angels that wait on us. Again and again, God blesses people with good news. Again and again, God blesses people by bringing heaven and the reign of God near. Again and again, God speaks promise into our terror, whether or not we hear. God does know about this mess. God does care. God is busy in those COVID wards, and God is busy outside them in places where there's no help and people are suffering. We're not too rich to deserve God's care. And by the way, we're not whiners. We are God's own beloved, dear children. And we stand on a firm foundation of God's spoken and delivered promises. We are marked and sealed with the cross of Christ because God speaks promise again and again and again. We may not be hearing anything, but faith and relationship with God are not based on hearing. They're based on God speaking. 
Faith and relationship with God are based on God's promise and God's action. We are God's own beloved dear children, and we stand on a firm foundation of God's spoken and delivered promise. Friends, God is still speaking. And again and again, God speaks promise. Amen. Let us confess our faith using this Lenten affirmation of faith. We believe in a God who is everywhere, everywhere and, and right here, here bigger, bigger than the sky and in the smallest details, all at once and in every moment. We believe that God meets us where we are, in heartbreak and high hopes, around crowded tables and in quiet homes, in joy and in suffering in loneliness and in connection, in sanctuaries and in living rooms, in marches and in waiting rooms. We believe that nothing we do or leave undone can distance us from God's love. God is forever drawing us close and pulling us in. Again and again, God meets us where we are and invites us into wholeness. Thanks be to God for a love like that. 
Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. In Jesus, O oh God, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction, especially the swift fox, burrowing owl, whooping crane, and bull trout. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness, O oh God. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that we may all maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. You walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially those who ask us to pray. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministry of care and concern, especially be before CK, the Calgary Alliance, prayer and care, prayer shawl knitting and crocheting, and CLWR. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For what else do the people of God pray? We lift to you, O oh God, all those who work with COVID firsthand every day. We pray that you strengthen them and give them your peace, that you enable them to hear you. We pray for our teachers and students and all those involved in the educational process. Keep them safe, keep them encouraged. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We pray, we praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Peace be with you, Phil. Peace, Laura. This is normally the time that we collect the offering and gifts, but because you are not here, we are not passing the plate. We invite you to donate to the ministries of the church by using the donate button on our website, by dropping a donation in the mail, or by the church office or by visiting Canada Helps and searching for Lutheran Church of the Cross, Calgary. We thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness in giving. Thank you. 
Faithful God, you walk beside us and meet us in our hunger with gifts of your presence. Accompany us and bless the gifts we offer from our wilderness places. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive a blessing. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.